Let's pick up our lesson on weak acids and calculating pHs. We're on number 61 from our lesson number 5 from chapter 16. We're being asked to calculate the pH of each of the following solutions using our Appendix D, which is the acid dissociation constants. Now Appendix D is found in the back of our chemistry book. For our convenience, I have one that we can refer to here. And if you've not yet picked one of these up, you might have it in your test taking tools already. But I do have extra of these um, in the classroom if you would like one. So you, just so you don't have to uh, keep flipping open your book to the Appendix D. So these are the constants we're looking at. Ka1s for the loss of the first proton, Ka2 for the second, and the third Ka3 for polyprotic acids. So this is a reference table that we'll be needing in order to calculate the pH for each of these. Well, let me model the first one, letter A. Propionic acid. And again, if I'm not quite sure what propionic acid is, I can use this. It's just alphabetical. Propionic acid is listed towards the bottom. Do you see how it says HC3H5O2? So I can find that formula for the acid to come up with the formula for our um, Bronsted-Lowry pairing. So propionic acid formula was looked up for it's an organic name, c 3 H5O2, and you see the acid hydrogen written first. We know that when acids are placed into water, we set up conjugate pairs. The proton is released from the acid, giving us C3H5O2 negative, and the hydronium polyatomic acid ion. So there's our equilibrium. And while I'm also looking, Let's record that Ka value for propionic acid. 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. The loss of the first proton, Ka1. And let me show you where I'm finding that. Propionic, I just skimmed over and I found the formula and I also find the Ka, all from the Appendix D test taking tool. 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. What's the pH of our solution? Well, here's what we know. In my ice chart, I, C, E, we have 0.095 as the original concentration of our acid. We would also know that there would be zero for the concentrations of the ions. They're yet to be formed. Water will drop out of our equilibrium as it is a pure liquid and they are not represented. So we have three things to consider in our Ka expression. Ultimately, we need to know the concentration of the hydrogen ion, or hydronium. And remember in my head, hydronium, H3O+, plus, is equivalent to hydrogen ion. The pH can be found by taking the negative log of the acid ion concentration. So we need this value to plug it into pH formula to find the solution. Well, we know that the reactants get consumed and the products get made. So in a familiar ice chart, we're making the ions all from the molecular form of the acid. So at equilibrium, we have 0.095 minus X, and we have X representing the concentration of each of the ions. In our expression for Ka, we have the propionate negative, times the concentration of the aqueous acid ion all over the molecular form of our acid. Just to remind ourselves, products over reactant, where Ka is an expression of the two ions over the mo uh, molecular form. Let's let X represent the concentration of both the negative and positive, both the conjugate pairs. And so I'll just simply write that as X squared over 0.095 minus X, and that's set equal to, of course, our Ka value, which was 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. So let's get that in a, a friendly algebraic formula. 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to X squared over 0.095 minus X. Of course, we'll need to distribute. So 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth will be distributed and that's still equal to x squared. 
Let me grab my calculator and hit with me, because sometimes I do make mistakes. Nice to have a calculator, buddy. 1.3 e negative 5 times 0 0.095. And I get 1.235 times 10 to the negative 6th minus 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5th x equal x squared. So why don't I just bring that over? Minus x squared set equal to 0. Now we have our quadratic equation formula where a is equal to negative 1, b is equal to negative 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth, and c is equal to 1.235 times 10 to the negative sixth. Let's pull out x. Remember, x is representing the concentration of the hydronium ion. So I'll go to my quad program. And for the letter A, we type in negative 1. For the letter B, it's negative 1.3 E negative 5. And for the letter C, 1.235 E negative 6. One of our answers comes out negative, which we know makes no sense. There's no such thing as negative concentration units. So X comes out to be 0 0.0011 and that's molar units. Remember, we're letting x represent hydrogen. So if I just carry that back up to the original ice chart, ultimately we needed to know the concentration of the hydronium ion, which we now have, don't we? So pH can be found by taking negative log of that concentration we just found, negative log of our answer point 0, 0, 1, 1, and we find a pH. Remember, always carry two units, 2.96 pH units. Using Ka, we set up a problem where x squared set over to 0.095 minus x. Before we proceed to letter B, let's remind ourselves of something called the 5% rule. I talked about it in our notepad in our Moodle lesson when we first delivered the instruction. If indeed the percent of ions that come out of solution are 5% or less, it's okay to toss out this x. In other words, the number 0 0.095 compared to the original value hardly changes. And let's model that. We just solved for x 0 0.0011 was the concentration value for x. And if I consider 0 0.095, whoops, 0 0.095 minus that value we calculated, 0 0.0011, do you notice how 0 0.0939 is essentially the same number? I mean, it's not, but it's close, isn't it? What we're allowed to do is if the percent 0 0.0011 Placed over the original concentration, let's check the 5% rule and show what that would have done to make our math a little bit easier. We calculated x as 0 0.0011. Over the original concentration, 095, if I express that as a percent part over whole, And I should show you what I'm doing on my calculator. Part over whole, just expressed as a percent, we get percent ionization as 1.16%. Indeed, that's less than 5%, isn't it? The 5% rule could have been used for this math. And it makes the math a little bit easier. In other words, we could have set up the original Ka, 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth, equal to x squared, and then simply set over 0 0.095. Instead of having to put the minus x in there, we could leave it as the original concentration. The rule says, 5% rule, if indeed the acid is weak enough and hardly dissociates, what we're looking at is being able to toss out that minus x. So that really, what I could have done, distribute that number 
set equal to x squared, square root my value, and would have been home free. Let's continue the problem. See, we found the pH 2.96 using the quadratic equation. Let's solve the pH with the 5% rule and compare those values. 1.3 e negative 5 times 0.095 is equal to x squared. So I'll square root that answer in x. Look at that. X came out to be 0 0.0011 units. That's the same value we found using the quadratic equation. Of course, negative log of that answer gives me the same value, 2.95. That's close enough, isn't it? 2.96 is what we calculated with the quadratic equation. Moral of the story is, with weak acids and weak bases, we'll see, we hear often something called the 5% rule. That instead of saying minus x in the equilibrium in this original acid, we can choose to talk to just toss out the value of minus x. It just makes the math a little bit easier. Although I highly recommend before proceeding that you are indeed obeying the 5% rule before you calculate. Now, let's try the letter 